This morning on Say Yes to You, a woman you might think has it all. Okay, you've heard of the little blue box from Tiffany's, but if you're a woman who likes jewelry, you probably know a little bit about the little yellow box. We're of course talking about Kendra Scott Jewelry based out of Austin. When I sat down with Kendra, she shared her challenges and strategies we can all use to increase our self-love. We're laughing because we both wore the yes. color, but I don't think women may know why, why your color is this wonderful yellow. Well, for a couple of reasons, but yellow is the happiest color out there. I mean, it's the color of the sun and it just brings you joy. When you see this color, you can't not be happy. But I took a personality test years ago and they do color by color, yellow, green, blue, it tells you what energy you are. And my life coach who gave it to me was like, Kendra, I've never seen anybody with this much yellow energy in my life. And this is before we had picked the color for our company brand, and it became very obvious that yellow was the Kendra Scott color. A happy color. <laughs> a happy and color. It's on every single box. It is. And well, I've I always wondered why. I say happiness comes in a yellow box. <laughs> so. That's perfect. So women look at you and they think, oh my gosh, she's got it all. She is successful, she's beautiful, she's a hard worker, she has everything. So. Have you had struggles with self-love, and I, whether that's confidence, self-love, and have you had those struggles? Yes, and that's why I wrote the book. I, I really wanted to show that there's power in vulnerability. We all go through difficult times in our lives, but from the outside, especially in the world of Instagram and filters, oh. we all try to appear as this like perfect mother, wife, you know, all those things, mm -hmm. and it can be so wearing on us. And so I thought if I could be more vulnerable and share the difficulties, the failures, the good times and the bad, that maybe other women could feel like they could share it too. And that's when you really start to have authentic and real relationships with each other. When you can be vulnerable and know that it's those things, the hard things, the struggles that make you unique. It's part of what makes you you. And those are beautiful things. So instead of being ashamed of them or hiding them, let's celebrate all of those things that we've gone through in our life and work together to, to you know, in, do encourage each other to talk about those You things. just said so much. <laughs> <laughs> so much there. But one, and you talk about your challenges, your failures, and I think people will be surprised at some of the things that you've been through in your life. Um, one of the things, and I'm gonna ask you, one of the things you focus on is the pressure to be a good mom. There's no such thing as perfection. Wonder Woman, I say in the book, is a fictional character that is not a real thing. So I think having forgiveness for yourself and being able to just say, I'm gonna do the best I can do today. And then tomorrow I'm gonna to wake up and I'm gonna do the best I can do today. And I'm also gonna forgive myself if I can't do everything at this highest level every single day. Um, you know, I think the most important thing for me is my children know where they stand. They are number one. I'm a mom before I'm a CEO, a founder, a designer. It's they're my priority. It's obvious in the book. It's yeah. obvious in the book. Oh, well, I mean, they're, they're my life, right? but I've created a work environment that allows other mothers and fathers to put their families first as well. Some women use affirmations. There are all different kinds of things that women use to improve their self-worth, their self-esteem, their image of themselves. Are there specific tools you have used? You know, one of the things I think I've really focused on is just gratitude. And I know that's mm -hmm. not necessarily a self tool, but when I can look and focus on the things I'm most grateful for, uh, you know, I try every day to write down three things things um, that I'm grateful for today. I do too. You, and it's it changes my perspective of my entire day. Totally. My entire outlook. You know, in my book, I, I wrote a lot about 2020 being a really difficult year, as it was for so many. Mm -hmm. But I almost la lost my father uh, during that time, who is my rock. And every day still on my one of my three is that he is still alive. And that gives me one more day with him. And when you start your day with that, it changes your whole perspective on yourself. Absolutely. Because you're going from a place of optimism optimism and happiness versus a place of negativity. And you talk about do good. Yes. Can you talk about that for a minute? Yeah. Why that's such a such a fundamental for you? It you know going back to you know my stepfather, he was mm -hmm. a two-tour Vietnam veteran. He spoke five languages fluently. He was diagnosed with brain cancer when I was in high school. And my whole world really changed because never in a million years could I think this dynamic man could, could get to this mm -hmm. point. But he inspired my first business, which was a hat company. I did a lot of headwear for men and women undergoing chemotherapy. And I remember when 
I opened my little shop in Austin, I wheeled him in. He was in a wheelchair at that point with his speech not being so great. And he looked at me and he said three simple words and they were, you do good. And those three words have just stuck mm. with me uh, every day since that day. And I remember having conversations of him saying to me, you have such a short time on this earth. You don't know how long you're gonna be here. Use the things that you love to make a difference in this world. And I knew when he said, you do good, what that meant. And that for me has been every day I wake up. Mm -hmm. I'm now 48, he died when he was 47. I think I have another day to do something good, to try to help somebody else. And I'm most proud of that. I think everyone at Kendra Scott is. Since 2010, we've been able to give $50 million to women's and children's charities. So we're much more than a jewelry company or brand. Uh, we are trying to do good in the world. Well, you brought some tears to my eyes. I know. So every time I tell that story, I get choked up. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And congratulations on your book. It's Thank you. so good. You're going to enjoy it. Thank you so much. She was so sweet. And one of the things I really like about the book, she really does reveal some things in the book that I was surprised to learn. But I think that what she wanted to do was, as she said, be as authentic as possible, be as real as possible. So maybe she sets that model that if she can accept herself, we can all accept ourselves. No, that's fantastic. I love her choice to be positive every day, and it's a choice, and she Gratitude. does that. And yeah. gratitude, that was, that's, that's such an important lesson. Anyway, the new book is Born to Shine. It's available wherever books are sold.